Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen and thank you, Caleb, for helping us on this beautiful Sunday morning with uh, begin with such a bright, uh, uplifting prelude. And uh, we welcome all of you to worship here at First Church today as we continue to celebrate Easter. Uh, if you're worshiping with us online or here in person, uh, we're grateful for your presence today and uh, looking forward to uh, how God uh, will speak to us this morning. Today we are observing Disability Awareness uh, Sunday in the life of our church as we do uh, each year. Uh, a time set aside for us to remember how Jesus calls us to love all of our neighbors and to be a church that physically and in our life together is accessible to everyone. And we're so glad this morning to have Dr. Douglas Curry with us from Messiah University. Uh, some of you may remember Doug. Uh, he was with us here uh, when we were working together to... Um, to develop our worship arts ministry. And we're so glad for your presence with us this morning, Doug. And, uh, and so glad too that uh, God has called us together to celebrate the presence of the risen Christ. Will you please uh, join me in the call to worship as we stand together and uh, open our hearts to him. Lord, it is so awesome that we can gather this morning and loudly praise your name and know we are standing in your presence. Lord, we are thankful there is room in your house, even if we need to share, honor, or pain to come together to worship. It is wonderful, Lord, that we're able to hear you speak to us through the proclamation of the word this morning. Lord, we are blessed to read your holy word and to recite the creeds and prayers. When our eyes are dim, Lord, we thank you for the talents of those who provide us with a large screen to see. Lord, we are truly blessed that we understand everything that is happening around us in the sanctuary this day. Father, Open our hearts, Lord. Make us accessible to your spirit and accessible to all your people. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is number 261, Lord of the Dance. And this was one of several hymns that was suggested for Disability Awareness Sunday. And as we sing together about our Lord of the Dance, be especially aware of how Jesus reached out and loved uh, all of God's children. Let's join together in this opening hymn.
So as we continue in the presence of the one who we call the Lord of the dance, let's join our hearts in, in unison as we pray the prayer of confession. Almighty and creating God, we come before you today as people who are separated from one another by fear, prejudice, and ignorance. By our language, actions, and facilities, we declare insiders and outsiders in our lives and in our church. Forgive us and create in us the vision of opening our hearts, minds, and doors as wide as the love of God so that no one is left outside. Help us to reach beyond ourselves to discover the joy of community. Give us the patience to discover that all people have gifts and abilities to share with our community of faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God's people say together, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're so grateful, Doug, to have you with us this morning uh, for worship. Uh, before I invite you to come and, and take the pulpit, um, 
I just want to share with the congregation a few things about uh, Dr. Douglas Curry, who serves as the worship ministries pastor at Messiah University, where he teaches and gives uh, faculty oversight to the music and worship degree program. He holds a, a BA from Messiah University, an MA from Lancaster Bible College Graduate School, Capital Seminary, and the DMIN from Wesley Theological Seminary. In addition to his extensive involvement giving uh, direction to worship arts ministries in local churches and the academy, Doug teaches the core courses in history, theology, and practice of worship at Capitol Seminary. An accomplished professional vocalist and choir director, Doug's vocational world also includes conference, workshop teaching events, choral, adjudication, as well as a consulting practice, working alongside of churches, much as you did here at First Church a couple of years ago, uh, to assist in the development of the worship and liturgical arts ministries. Doug is married to Heidi. Uh, they've been married 30 years, and he has three sons, Nathaniel, Samuel, and Daniel. His son, Samuel, is dual diagnosed with uh, Down syndrome and autism and was born with two congenital heart defects. Their experiences with Sam and the church have enhanced their understanding of varying abilities, sensitivities, and the beauty of intuition. And it, it is uh, a great joy for us, Doug, uh, to welcome you to First Church this morning. Let's welcome Dr. Curry to our church. Thank you, and good morning. You will learn to love him. A dear friend said to me as I struggled to come to terms with the birth of my son, Samuel. It was one of those times in life, many of you can relate, I think, when you're met with a real life situation that takes you completely by surprise. So much so that you're not even sure it's real. But it only takes mere moments to discover, oh yes, this is very real. So as you heard, my son Sam was born with two congenital heart defects and Down syndrome, none of which was evident before his birth, notwithstanding three ultrasounds and a relatively uneventful pregnancy, we were unprepared and in a certain kind of shock. You will learn to love him, my dear friend said. More about Sam in a moment. Well, you've just heard a little bit of uh, my bio, and since I'm a worship ministries pastor and a professor of worship, and since we're in worship together this morning, I first want to point to one of the core principles of Christian worship, that it should be hospitable, caring, welcoming. So on Disabilities Awareness Sunday, I think it's important to first recognize this core principle in our worship. And, and what does that mean for our worship to be hospitable? Well, in worship, we pray for ourselves, for our community, for our world, and we're then sent out for lives of service and witness. Right over there, you have it, that sign. You're now entering the mission field. John Whitfleet says that worship stokes the gratitude in our hearts that leads us naturally to serving the needs of our broken world. So that starts right here in our worship together. And when I've been privileged to visit First Church, I have found you to have captured this dimension of hospitality and welcome. I've witnessed how others have been recognized, included, 
invited to belong. Thank you. Thank you for rendering importance to your access ministry and to rejoicing spirits. They are not simply ancillary dimensions of this church. They are, they should be, integral to the life of this particular body of Christ. God welcomes all. My wife Heidi and I have three boys, as Pastor Denny mentioned. And in recent years, Sam is now known to us as having Down syndrome and full autism spectrum disorder. And for our family, the nature of life both in and out of the church is a daily reality full of joys and challenges, learning and growth, moments of comfort, and at other times, complete disorientation. And we continue to learn how best to include, involve, and help Sam to belong. Because hospitality doesn't come naturally for some of us. And Sam continues to tolerate us, our misunderstandings, and he teaches us on an ongoing basis what it means to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Disabilities Awareness Sunday is not, and I hope you know this, the church bringing some kind of larger cultural narrative into its doors in order to join the inclusivity generation. No, Disabilities Awareness Sunday is born in a biblical and theological understanding of how God has created us and how each of us bears great worth in the sight of God. The scriptures are clear on this matter. In Genesis 1, we see the Imago Dei, that we are created in God's image. In Psalm 139, we read these words, You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And in John chapter 9, Jesus challenges the long-held Jewish belief that calamity or suffering or disability was the result of some great sin. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. And the Apostle Paul gives us specific instructions, specific instructions to the church as to how we should respond. God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, There are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division 
in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in Romans chapter 12, Paul says this, By the grace given me, I say to every one of you, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought. Rather, think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To be clear about belonging, Scottish theologian John Swinton develops a distinction to help us between inclusion and belonging. And he writes this, inclusion is simply not enough. To include people in society is just to have them there. All we have to do is make the church accessible, have the right political structures, make sure people have a cup of tea or coffee at the end of the service or whatever. There is a big difference between inclusion and belonging. To belong, you have to be missed. There's something really, really important about that. People need to long for you, to want you to be there, and when, they're, when you're not there, they should go looking for you. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. Don't worry, I'll teach that to you in a moment. So here's my son. Here's, here's some pictures of my son, this is Super Sam. Sam loves watching movies. Sam's a Pixar fan, especially of The Incredibles. He watched it yesterday for about the 3,742nd time. <laughs> he loves the Minions. He loves listening to music. Everything from Mozart to Samba to, we discovered recently on a drive to Hershey, Little Bluegrass. Sam participates in fitness, actually not far from here, just down the road, by Juice and Java. He participates three times a week at Fitness for Focus. He enjoys that. Sam helps his dad mow, mostly. He can't do a straight line, so dad has to help him, but that's okay. And later today, Sam will enjoy his favorite meal. Sunday is pepperoni pizza day. Sam very much dislikes loud and sharp sounds. Weed eaters, saws, plates, dishes, pots and pans clanging. Indeed, we've discovered certain environments of Christian worship where the sound is deafening and not warm. Sam dislikes children screaming or crying. And we've discovered that Sam doesn't like his parents arguing. He kind of starts pounding. That's a true story. So we've discovered that Sam is the most emotionally intuitive member of our family. And while his cognition is quite low, lower than average for a male with Down syndrome, Sam participates as he can in worship as a member of the body of Christ. Several years ago, I was having lunch at Brothers Restaurant in Mechanicsburg with then interim senior pastor of Grantham Church, John Yates. At one point in our meal and conversation together, John said to me, 
how can we better help Sam? As one who typically doesn't struggle to determine what to say, I was silent. Unfortunately, it wasn't a question I'd been asked by a church leader all that often. And I wasn't sure what to say. So I pondered for a moment, and then something somewhat simple occurred to me. John, I said, first, thank you for asking. It really means a lot. You know, nearly every time we say the Lord's Prayer, and we do that at Grantham on a weekly basis, I said to John, you seem to rush through it. It's one of the few elements in worship that Sam remembers and can actively participate in, well, as best as he can. And so I asked John, would you consider slowing down? John thanked me for my candor and apparently went home and asked his wife, Amy, if she thought he spoke the Lord's Prayer too quickly. Fortunately, she affirmed my thinking. And the following Sunday, Pastor John indicated to the congregation that he would, be, he would be taking more time with the Lord's Prayer. And even as we have progressed with a new senior pastor, we continue as a congregation to pray that prayer together at a more measured pace. You see, this story isn't about inclusion. It's about belonging. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong. What about you and this congregation at First Church? How can you participate in helping everyone gain a sense of belonging. If I may, let me suggest a few things as the dad of a child with a developmental disability. Some pleases and some please do nots. Please ask those in your congregation with special needs or family members with special needs what you can do to help and know that they might not be sure at first. So take the time to listen and be open to a certain initial discomfort in your collective attempts to be a more belonging kind of congregation. Please do not ask these families how to do this in a rushed or harried way in the hallway somewhere here at church. Honestly, for, for some of us, we don't even know how we're doing at any given moment of the day. And it was, it's all we can do to have just gotten here this morning. Recognize, rather, that we're here. Greet us warmly. Sometimes that's all we need. And please do not tell these families how special they are because they have a family member with a disability or that God chose them because he loves them more or something like that. I've been told both of those things over the years. And let's be honest here, we all have special needs, right? And personally, I've learned that as much as I might help Sam, as much as I might teach and nurture, that Sam has also been my teacher along the way. So be open, as the scriptures have indicated this morning, for the members of the body of Christ to serve you as well. You will learn to love him, my dear friend said on the day of Sam's birth. 
And she was right. What was complete disorientation and discomfort has become for us a journey of learning how to love. Who is it in your congregation that needs to learn from you and be helped by you to belong so that they can belong as a full member of this first church body of Christ? God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. This is a song from South Africa. You're fortunate. I could have you sing it in another language. <laughs> this is a walking song. And it's something that sort of engenders this idea. So let, let's sing this together, if we can. Let's have the words on this. Thank you very much. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. One more time. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. Amen. Uh, thank you, Doug, for your wonderful word to us this morning. Will you please stand as we sing together, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Please be seated. I invite you now to join with me uh, in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious God, great is your faithfulness. As we worship you on this glorious morning, we are mindful, Lord, of your great mercies bestowed so abundantly upon us. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. We thank you, God, for the coming of springtime, for new life bursting forth all around us. And we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord of life and the new life that we have in him even as he conquered death. We thank you as well, Lord, that you created each of us in your own image. That every one of us belongs in your sight. Thank you for the proclamation of your word this morning through Dr. Curry. And for the reminder, Lord, that you call us and you gift us, each one, to be a church that extends hospitality to everyone and to be committed to helping everyone to belong. Lord, we are mindful today of those uh, from our church family who need the touch of your hand. We think, Lord, of those who are recovering from surgery and recent hospitalization. For those, Lord, who are in treatment for various illnesses. We think of those who feel the weight of grief asking, Lord, that you would give them your peace. And we think of those, Lord, who from day to day are caregivers. Grant them, we pray, your strength as they uh, serve in such an important way in the lives of your children. Lord, we thank you for the gift of being the church together. And pray that in this Easter season, you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we might proclaim in our words and actions the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, we are also mindful that we live in a world yearning for your peace. We think of Ukraine and Eastern Europe. We pray for an end to the hostilities there. We pray for your protection and shelter. And for those, Lord, who have fled home and familiar places, often to other countries where they are refugees. Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you would accomplish that which, from a human point of view, looks impossible to us. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world who face hostility and persecution. Lord, we're grateful for the gift of your presence with us today in our worship and for the assurance that you go with us into all the places you call us to be. And now we join together, Lord, 
as slowly we pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, I'd like to welcome you all to worship at, at First Church and want to share uh, some things that are happening in the life and ministry of our church, even as I invite you to visit our church website where there's a lot of information, including a copy of our bulletin uh, for today. This afternoon at 4 o'clock uh, is our monthly Rejoicing Spirit service, and we look forward to a time of worship at 4 today over here in the green chair section. Today, immediately following this service over in the multi-purpose room, we have a special presentation by Josh and Megan Herring. Josh is one of the missionaries that we support. Uh, he's involved in the Disciple Maker uh, campus outreach, and we look forward to catching up with Josh, who grew up here at First Church, and, uh, and with Megan, and uh, what God is doing in and through their ministry, and that's at 945 over in the multi-purpose room today. Beginning next Sunday, we're starting a new series of sermons, We Are Witnesses, and we'll be focusing on some of the uh, great stories from the early church as, uh, as uh, recorded in the, in the book of Acts. And we invite you to, um, to join us as we look at what it looks like for us today uh, as those who claim the good news of Jesus Christ to share that in our community and beyond. Also, uh, we look forward this summer to once again having Vacation Bible School. And the theme this year is Food Truck Party. We invite uh, you to mark the dates of July 11 to 15. We're hoping to have a lot of children as well as uh, others involved in that, uh, in that great week. And we have an early uh, registration period that's coming up. That registration will begin next week, actually, for Bible school this summer. And we look forward to that. We also have a fellowship event planned on May the 3rd, a pickleball picnic. And uh, the other day, I actually watched people play pickleball for the first time. <laughs> and uh, it looks like something that might cause injury. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, we do look forward to a great time of fellowship uh, together at Memorial Park on May the 3rd at 530. And also uh, would encourage you to mark on your calendar the National Day of Prayer. We will have uh, a gathering here uh, at the church on Thursday, May the 5th in the morning. Uh, we invite all of you to join in lifting up our nation uh, in, in prayer as we join with our sisters and brothers from all over the country in uh, exalting the Lord who has established us, which is the theme for this year. Remembering... God's great faithfulness to us. Will you please stand now and join in our closing hymn, Blessed Assurance.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen.